Um, so my name is Joy Cushman, and I grew up in northern Maine on the opposite border of the country, northeast border of Canada. And I grew up on a potato farm that had been in my family for generations. I uh, grew up sleeping in the bedroom that my grandfather had slept in as a kid. Um, and my first day of kindergarten, I was five years old, and I'm the oldest kid, and my dad took me to Burger King. And he said, Joy, congratulations on starting school. How many years do you have left? And I said, 13. I thought it was really smart. I kindergarten plus 12 years of school. And he said, no, you have 17. Mm -hmm. Because I have to tell you that the economy doesn't look good right now. And your mom and I aren't doing that well. And we're struggling. And the only way that you're ever going to have a chance in life is to go to college. And I'm not going to be able to afford for you to go. So you better start working hard now so you can get a scholarship to go to college. And it turned out my dad was right. He, when I was uh, 14, he, because of my mother's, uh, my mother's mental illness, because of her medical costs, he ended up going bankrupt and losing the farm. And yesterday when we did the stand, I realized that my stand was dignity. And I think it goes back to that year when I was 14. And I saw my parents going to the church to ask for clothes and food to get through that winter and feeling shame that they had to beg and feeling like there must be something we can do. There must be some way to fight back and seeing no fight back. So I was lucky I got a scholarship to go to good school. I got to go to Bowdoin College in Maine. And it's a fairly wealthy liberal arts college where most students don't uh, have financial aid because their parents are able to pay for them to go. And when I was there, I spent the first three years totally silent. Anyone else go through school like that? Thinking everyone else knows more than I do and everyone else has more experience than I do and I don't know anything. And then my senior year in college, um, the college decided that they, when I was accepted, I was accepted under a need blind policy where they didn't look at how much money your parents made, they accepted you if they wanted you and then committed to the money it would take to go. My senior year in college, they decided the economy is too tough. We're going to end that need blind policy and have to start looking at how much people's parents make when we decide if they can come to school here. And I didn't think that was right. So it was the first time I spoke up in college. And I found other students on scholarships. And we organized. And we went to meet with the president. And we went to meet with the head of financial aid. And we met with the trustees. And we won. Bowdoin is still, uh, 12 years later, a need blind college. And now is one of the most progressive student aid policies in the country. And so I learned that that was how change happens. That it's about, it is about dignity and saying, my voice matters, my experience matters, and I can't count on anyone else to stand up for me. I've got to stand up for myself. So I realized after college that organizing was a, a profession. So I was looking for an organizing job. And I got a job in Maine working for this organization that was trying uh, to stop uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield in Maine from being sold to Anthem, a private insurance company. And they told me I was a community organizer. Um, but really, I was going out every day in the snow from 2 to 10 every day canvassing. Has anyone been there and done that? <laughs> OK. So I'm out there knocking on doors, getting paid 50 bucks a day. and asking people for money for this organization. And after a few months of that, I had had the door slammed in my face one too many times. And I went outside, stood there looking at the snow, the stars in the sky, and said, where's the dignity in this? When people ask me, what can I actually do about this? I say, you can give us money. And they say, what is the money for? It's to pay a lobbyist in Augusta to lobby for us. I had no petitions for people to sign. I had no actions for people to get involved in. So I said, you know what? If that's organizing, forget it. I'm done. And I went to graduate school and started to study change and how changes happen historically in other movements. And came back to the, I studied in Scotland and then came back to the US and started working as a community organizer. So I was looking for a model that, a model of organizing that was about dignity and whole people and not just bodies, not just bodies in a room.